this, this is a dream uh, that we had uh, for years. Um, the building is a dream. Uh, and I, I just would like to let people know, those of you who've, who've helped us over the years, that it's not just a building. It, it, it's, it's operative. It's full. Uh, I often say that, you know, uh, you can build it, uh, but then you have to have content, right? And, uh, and that the difference between the Tower of Babel uh, with its own um, g gateway to the gods and, and Jacob's dream of a gateway to the gods is that the builders of the Tower of Babel built the tower and they thought they had it. Uh, and Jacob dreamt. And when you dream, you know that you're never there. We're never there. There's still much more work to be done. So you're part of a process that's really moving us toward our goal. How, how did this all begin? The Jewish uh, Community Federation uh, did a feasibility study in 1990, uh, and the result of the feasibility study was that the community of Los Angeles was not prepared to fund the Hillel at, uh, or building it in, in, in Westwood. It was very expensive. So a few years later, when there was a new president of Hillel, we had a visit from Edgar Bronfman. And I want to mention Edgar Bronfman, Zichrono de Bracha, blessed memory. He was the major force that allowed us to fulfill our wishes and our dream. He came here when we were in our old building. We have some alumni who remember the, uh, our, our, our presence at the religious conference. And he came into the building and he said, you're in a basement. How could that be? And then we had a dinner for him that night and he said, we got to get a new building. And I sort of smiled and I thought, well, maybe. Uh, a couple of months later, we were at a, a camp, a summer camp, where Bronfman had come to, to speak to the students and tell them about his, his learning, his, how Judaism has value uh, substantively, and how he's come to it late in life, and that students should know that there are teachings in Judaism that, that are the basis for universal morality and principles. Um, and in the process, he pulled me aside and he said, you know, my friend Wasserman wanted to do something in my honor. I told him, not in my honor. We'll do something together. <coughs> a few months later, I was finishing teaching a class, and I called the office. It was 5 in the afternoon. I was on campus, uh, and the, the, uh, the receptionist said to me, the chancellor called. He said it was urgent. Call him back. So I called the chancellor. It was Chuck Young, and he says to me, Chaim, are you still at the URC? I said, yes. He said, would you like your own building? <laughs> what would you say? <laughs> I, I, I laughed. You know, so he, he said, well, someone came to my office this morning and wants to give Hillel a building. I said, really? Yeah. Do you want to know who it was? I said, yes. He said, well, Lou Wasserman came to my office this morning. Um, and he asked me to tell you that he, Lou Wasserman, and Edgar Brockman are each contributing a million dollars towards the Hillel building. Then this chancellor said to me, what happened? What was this all about? <laughs> so I said to him, you remember when I, I called you that Bronfman was visiting campus, you weren't here, et cetera, et cetera. He said, you know, we can't give you any money. We're a state university. But we have a real estate office, and we can help you if you have a building in mind. Well, Ed Kaminer, Allah HaShalom, had seen this building. He knew that it wasn't being used. And we, I called the principal in, in, uh, in the chancellor's office the next morning. I told him the story. It was owned by the YWCA. And the university uh, administrator said to me, give me two weeks. Two weeks later, I called him and he said, they'll sell. And that's the beginning of this story. And, the, and because Bronfman and Wasserman gave the, the lead gift, they decided in those years, it was 1996, to name the building in memory Yitzhak Rabin. Today, we actually have to bear in mind that another Israeli prime minister has passed away, Ariel Sharon, and we carry that memory proudly of Yitzhak Rabin on this building. And then what followed a few weeks later was a call from another alumnus, Mark Levy, who said to me that his father-in-law, uh, the Kalsmans, uh, his in-laws, uh, would like to give a naming gift to the building. And that started a rush that allowed us to, to, to actually go beyond what we imagined. So you're here, I want to, uh, Mark isn't here with us today, we want to wish him, those of you who are friends of Mark Levy's know, we want to wish him well, he's, uh, he's been set back in uh, his health, in his health. So we pray for him, we remember, we remember Edgar Bronfman, as I say, Zachor Latov, and Ed Kaminer. These are people who gave of themselves and of their support to make this Hillel possible.